This video explains how to change the font and item size of a base R plot in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example and this example is based on the plot that we can create with lines two to four of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the bottom right of our studio that a new scatter plot has been created, which is showing five different data points with five different colors. Now, if you want to draw a legend to this plot, then we can apply the legend function as you can see in lines five to eight of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see that a legend is appearing at the top right of our plot. And this legend shows our five different colors and the labels that are corresponding to these colors. However, at this point, we have used the default size for the font and for the items in this legend. And in the next example, I want to show you how to change the size of these items and labels. And for this, we first need to recreate our plot once again to show the plot without a legend, as you can see in lines 10 to 12. And then in the next step, we have to use the par function, as you can see in line 14. And within the par function, we are using the CEX argument to change the size of our legend items and of the labels in this legend. So in this case, I'm setting the CEX argument to be equal to two. However, the larger this value is, the larger your legend will be. And then I'm storing the output of this function in a new data object that I'm calling OP because I want to restore my default specifications later on. So after running line 14 of the code, you can see that this new data object called OP is appearing at the top right. And then in the next step, I can draw our legend once again. So if you run lines 16 to 19 of the code, you can see that our legend is recreated and this time the legend is much larger. So in this specific example, the legend is so large that it's not even shown entirely in our plot. And then in the next step in line 21, I'm using the par function once again to restore our default specifications. So in this case, I have stored the default specifications in the data object OP. So after running line 21, our default specifications are restored. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.